Now let us see what are the different properties of DFT. A DFT of a sequence X of N is represented by this capital letter X of K. So the first property that is the periodicity property which indicates that if a sequence it is a periodic then its DFT is also periodic. Let us see what is mean by a periodic sequence. Here in this graph you will see that one sequence is given which is repeating the same pattern after particular samples. So a sequence which is repeating the same pattern it is called as the periodic sequence. So here this property indicates that if a sequence it is a periodic its DFT is also periodic for all number of k's. Let us see the second property. If x1 of k and x2 of k are the endpoint DFTs of x1 of k, x1 of n and x2 of n respectively and if a and b are the arbitrary constant then we can say that a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n and its n point DFT that is equal to a into x1 of k plus b into x2 of k that is when we multiply a sequence with a constant a, similarly we are multiplying another sequence x2 of n with the b and if we take the endpoint DFT of that, it is found that it is nothing but the summation of the DFTs which are multiplied with a and b respectively. The third property is the circular time shifting property. The shifting of sequence in the time domain by L samples is equal to the multiplying the sequence in the frequency domain by the e raised to minus j 2 pi k L divided by n. So here if the x1 of xn that is one sequence and its corresponding DFT is x of k and here if we are shifting this x, x of n by the L samples and taking its DFT. So that will be nothing but the DFT multiplied by the term e raised to minus j 2 pi k L divided by n. Circular frequency shifting. It indicates that the multiplication of a sequence in a time domain by e raised to j 2 pi k L divided by n is equivalent to the shifting of a DFT in the frequency domain by the L samples. So this is the sequence x of n and its DFT it is given by x of k and in the time domain if we multiply x of n with e raised to j 2 pi k L divided by n and if we take its n point DFT so that is nothing but the DFT which is shifted by the L samples in the frequency domain. The fifth property that is the circular convolution and it is one of the most important property used for the calculation of the DFT multiplications. So indicates that if x1 of n it is a one sequence its n point DFT it is de uh, denoted by the x1 of k and x2 of n is another one sequence whose n point DFT it is calculated by x2 of k. So these two sequences if we took the circular convolution of these two sequences and the DFT of these two sequences that is nothing but the multiplication of individual DFTs shown over here. Sixth property that is the time reversal property. If a sequence is circular folded then its DFT is also circularly folded. If x of n it is a sequence and its DFT it is denoted by x of k and if we fold that cir sequence circularly and if we take its uh, DFT it will be find that its DFT is again circularly folded. So let us see what is mean by circularly folded sequence. Consider this is a one sequence which is represented by this circle. Now here we are representing all the samples in the anti-clockwise direction. Now if we want to take the folded sequence of this x of n which is denoted by x of a minus n, so here all the samples that are written in the clockwise direction as shown over here. 
So x of minus n that indicates the folded circularly folded version of the x of n. So for the time reversal property it indicates that for any sequence if we take its DFT here when the signal is circularly shifted time reversal property is there and we take the DFT here again the output sequence that is again the circularly folded. Complex conjugate property. The DFT of a complex conjugate of a sequence is equal to the complex conjugate of a DFT of that sequence with the sequence delayed by a K sample in the frequency domain. So X of N is one sequence. Its N point DFT is X of K. And if we take the complex conjugate of x of n, let us denote it by the x into star into n. And if we take its DFT, so it is found that this is nothing but the DFT which is delayed by the k samples. Next property that is the Parseval's theorem. For a complex value sequence x of n and y of n in general, we can say that if x of n it is a one sequence, its a DFT it is denoted by x of k, and y of n it is another one sequence whose DFT is given by capital Y of k. So here we are taking the summation from n is equal to zero up to n minus one for the x of n into complex conjugate of the y of n. So that is equal to 1 upon n summation from k is equal to 0 up to n minus 1 of x of k multiplied by x y of k where x of k that is the DFT of the x of n and the y star of k that is nothing but the complex conjugate DFT of this y of n. Next 